Hi friends, a very good evening to all of you. And first of all, I would like to wish happy Daughters' Day to all the daughters and the daughters who have daughters. A very happy Daughters' Day to everyone. And today, luxury meets unique exponent of Sufi Kathak. We have with us today. Uh, now uh, today we have uh, Sufi Kathak dancer. Asta Dixit. So let's all welcome Asta. Hello everyone. <laughs> Asta, a warm Hi. welcome on luxury.co. Thank you so uh, much. I would just like to brief the audience a bit about Asta. Asta Dixit is a stunning performer, graceful and precise in her movement and her stage presence has a unique quality to pull and carry the audience into her dance. Her expression bhav is mesmerizing and as, as this old age tradition of storytelling calls for, has the power to transport, transport one to another time. She has performed at, at festivals in India such as Khajurao Dance Festival and Kathak Mahotsa, Konar Festival, Baroda Kathak Dance Festival and internationally in world cultural festivals, Germany, Festival of India, China, UK and the USA. So Asta, today we would love to know your story and your journey to being Sufi Kathak dancer. How did that happen? So Madhvi, <laughs> no mystery about it. Um, you know, these things are, uh, you know, kind of uh, very natural one leads to another. Uh, I was, uh, you know, uh, I was dancing, uh, as, you know, in New Delhi, and I had uh, returned from the U.S. Uh, after giving up my corporate career, my job uh, in Deloitte and Touche. So um, I had already started training with some of the gurus from Katha Kebra, and uh, at that time I was uh, training with my first guru from Jaipur Khanana, Sri Harish Kasani Ji. And, uh, you know, and then slowly, slowly I, you know, uh, transitioned and I kind of started to explore my own self in my dance, you know. Um, I worked for the Ministry of Culture for uh, two, uh, two odd years as a part of their repertory, uh, you know, Kathak in the repertory. And then I, you know, I met, uh, you know, another fine lady who ended up being my guru uh, present. Uh, and, you know, I, you know, I was always in my journey as a dancer, I was always seeking something, seeking meaning, you can say, you know, and, um, you know, I, it's, a, it's a very personal thing, you know, because every dancer connects to the dance in, in some unique way, you know, and um, so I think, you know, for me, it just happened to be, you know, the voice of these Sufi mystics, because uh, you know, I found it to be, it's just a, a, a very, you can say a natural thing, you know. So, I think one doesn't necessarily dance for, you know, any particular audience. They, you know, express what's in their heart. And perhaps somewhere this was already there, lying in my, you know, in my heart somewhere. Uh, so, that's how it happened. And, uh, you know, so I was um, then approached by some people. Uh, I starred in some musicals also where I, you know, performed to many different kalams, Sufi and the people of that, the, the era, you know, of the, of during the, the court, uh, court dance era, you know, of uh, also Nawab Bajid Ali Shah and other, uh, you know, well-known Mughal emperors of the time, you know, who were uh, quite big patrons of the art. So, you know, I, uh, you know, so the, it was just a journey which kind of started unfolding, you know, as I, you know, got uh, my calling, you know, as I got, you know, so, yeah. Trained by uh, the Jaipur Gharana, Birju Maharaj and many others who are legends in the uh, Kathak, uh, you know, dance form. Bilkul, bilkul. Um, so, you know, every... Right? People. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I always feel blessed that I found the right guru. I, I, I can say it over and over. You know, I think this is your destiny. It is your calling, and uh, who you meet along your way in your dance journey. You know, and um, so yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> it was. It was of course. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Great. And uh, you know, I would like to tell the audience that Asuka has acted in multi films. 
in South India cinema as an actress and dancer. So, Asta, I would like to ask you that you were once on the silver screen as an actress in Telugu cinema. What made you choose dance as your path? So, you know, Madhvi, I had just returned from the US and in fact, uh, I had uh, gone straight to Hyderabad. And I was shooting for my first film uh, called Pelaina Kutulo, uh, starring, you know, uh, it, was a, it was a multi-star, you know, star cast. And I was just doing a small role in that, in that film. And, uh, you know, and then uh, after, you know, after that film release, then, uh, you know, naturally I got multiple offers. And I then, you know, started selecting my scripts, you know, and I would tell my manager, you know, I was, uh, you know, informing him that I'm kind of, I'm looking for something of this kind only, you know. And so I ended up starring, um, you know, I, I stayed back in Hyderabad for some time and then I went back to Delhi and then I came back for another script, you know. It was a film which was actually, you can say, a mythological-based uh, film. Uh, and, uh, you know, I played a very special character in it. And, um, you know, so the shooting, the shooting went on for like about four months or so. And I was constantly in Hyderabad at different sets, different locations, and, you know, uh, also multiple songs, you know. So, uh, you know, it was, of course, it was a, a very good introduction to uh, cinema and a very, I think, good first attempt at, uh, you know, as an actress. So, you know, um, so now to get to your question, uh, you know, what made me kind of, you can say, choose dance. Um, right. Oh, acting. I had a... <laughs> but, um, that you'd have to be a judge for when you see my films. <laughs> and I would love your, I would love your feedback on that. But actually, no, I, you know, I had a very small incident, um, which I'd like to share here, if you don't mind. Um, at the press release of my film, uh, I was asked by some reporters to uh, step aside and take uh, some photos, you know, for okay. publicity. Um, and, um, you know, I had just arrived from LA and I was, uh, you know, obviously all dressed and, you know, I, I sat down, you know, on, on, you know, to take some photographs. And one of these, you can say, a somewhat, uh, you know, not well-behaved photographer, or naughty oh. photographer, you can say, uh, took some photos of uh, me uh, in, in not such good angles, you know, in some uh, provocative angles. Am, am I clear? No, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he took some photographs, you know, this photographer, and, uh, and he put them on the internet. And uh, so after this incident, you know, like it just, I just didn't go back for a second, for a, a third film, whatever, after this, you know, I guess somewhere it just left a sense of shame or something in me, you know, and I just didn't go back for, uh, you know, a, a third or fourth film. So, and I just, you know, that's, that's how it is. I think somewhere these things uh, affect you, you know, they, they, they leave a sense of, uh, you know, I don't know, like, it's a sensitive, it's a sensitive thing for somebody, you know. So, that's what yeah. kind of, you know, and, yeah, and then I got busy with my dance, and I, you know, I, and, and the years just went by, and then, you know, and then, uh, you know, and then, you know, people always ask me, like, why aren't you on the big screen, why aren't you on the silver screen, why aren't you in cinema? So, you know, I was uh, um, touring very widely, I was uh, working in different countries, I was kind of performing with my troupe also of dancers. Right. And, um, and then, you know, in 2016, I went back to Bombay and uh, I, you know, I thought, let me try my hand <laughs> one more time, as in, uh, you know, in Bollywood or whatever, in the industry. So I got in touch, you know, so I was there for a very short time. I wasn't there for more than maybe four or five months. But in that time, I saw that it was a very difficult thing it was not an easy entry you know it was uh, even the casting directors uh you know not were not giving me the time you know that i you know whatever it was different it was different from when i was back you know uh like 24 25 in the south you know like as an actress you know blooming an actress so yeah so times have changed so anyway um you know, so um, all the 
that glitters is gold. I mean, there is a lot that goes inside uh, the making of uh, the uh, actor or an actress, and it's very nice to know the insight of the, you know, get an insight into the industry. So I'm glad that yeah. you shared with us because uh, we have no clue yeah. and idea about, uh, you know, why why somebody gives up on the career. And I think the main reason you told is, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a lot of struggle in the industry, and it's not that easy. I believe. No, no, undoubtedly it's not. It's not. You know, and, and I, it, and I, of course, I, you know, I respect the actors. I mean, it's it's a very it's a, it's a very busy life. You know, I saw that uh, we would wake up at 4 a.m. every day, and uh, you know, and our makeup makeup would take you know would go on for about two to three hours, and then you know we'd be ready for our first take or shot when when the light came, you know, you know the daylight uh, came on at about seven seven thirty, you know, and then the days would go till you know till late. And this would be again the next day, and again the next day, you know. So this would, yeah. So and this so went on for yeah. Your health takes a toll as well. Your skin because yeah. of the makeup or and also your erratic schedules. Erratic schedules, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and this would go on for about two weeks straight, you know, even without weekends. And then we would break, you know, we would break for maybe another two weeks and then come back on the set. So it was like that, you know. So yeah. <laughs> Hi. And she's saying Asta has a magnetic smile, and uh, yeah. she's saying India, India is blessed to have such uh, personalities, unique personalities, undoubtedly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Asta, I would like to ask you that where all have you lived, and where are you now in your life? Um. So you know, I obviously grew up in uh, you know in Los Angeles. Right. Um, yeah, I was there from the age of eight. My parents migrated, uh, and uh, basically, I grew up my entire teenage life, you know, in the Greater Los Angeles area. Uh, and um, I graduated uh, from UCLA. Oh wow! Okay. Yes. yes. And I came back in. Uh, like I said, California is like our second home. We have a lot of a family, and every summer vacation you know, holidays we used to go to California. Really? Oh, lovely. It, it, I mean, I could say anything, you know, I say is less about California, <laughs> especially the weather, especially the weather, you know. So, yeah, so this is our life, my life growing up, you know, with my friends, kind of totally carefree, you know, not even thinking about the future, knowing that, you know, knowing that everything is possible, anything and everything, anything is possible, you know, basically. And then I came back to India in, uh, you know, 2000 between 2006 and 2007 uh, when my parents had already moved back and uh, you know and then like I said I got this offer for this film, South Indian film and uh, you know that, that kind of brought me back and then I stayed on you know and I continued to train with my gurus and I you know from there on I just you know kind of focused on my dance and my career and what not. Awesome, wonderful. Yeah. And, uh, I would like to tell the audience that Asta is the co-founder and she has her own dance company which she started in 2003 to 2005 and that turned throughout the US. That toured throughout the US and as they became an icon for unique India inspired performances in the Hollywood industry. Asta and her dance company performed in an international Pepsi commercial with world famous pop singer Christina Aguilina in 2005. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So you have your yeah. own dance company, and if you can tell about it. Yeah, that was uh, back back when I was, uh, you know, uh, dancing with my friends in, in Los Angeles. And you can kind of say this was what led me to pursue dance professionally. This was kind of like a turning point. And I, and I, from there, I realized that this is something that I want to make a, a career of, you know. And, but not knowing at that time, you know, much the landscape of things, especially in India, I chose to come back, you know, and uh, very rightfully so. And then, you know, I was recommended by a family member of mine that, uh, you know, dear, you must, you know, you must focus on your training. You must pursue it, you know, professionally. So I went back to the gurus, you know, I, I went back and I, and I studied with the gurus of Kathak and spent, you know, countless hours learning the talim and, 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 you know, the, the nuances of the dance and everything. So, you know, and, uh, so yeah, I mean, that's, I think, what, what led to my journey, you know, and the journey as a dancer now and then in Sufism also where I have found a voice, you could say. Um, so, yeah. Amazing. Awesome. And yeah. uh, you performed with the famous pop singer such as Christine Aguilera. How does it feel like to have come such a long way? <laughs> I think this. Uh, I think this is just the start. This is just the beginning, and there's a long ways to go. <laughs> you know, um, I think it always feels 
artist's journey and artist's life uh, you always feel like you're discovering yourself and uh, you know and uh, yeah so <laughs> so you know madhuri uh, you know i i just to kind of address the current situation um you know i've just been thinking about it a lot and uh, i want to speak about artists you know True. and uh, because uh, you know it's just something which i it is really coming from my heart because you know like i myself moved from the us you know in 2007 uh you know but i see the current situation uh, of the country and the challenges that you know that the artists are facing and uh, you know something i wanted to voice out loud um yeah yeah so you know um basically you know artists have to be present with the current situation of the world and uh, the cultural ethos of the community in which he or she survives you know and i say survives because an artist is you know commonly just surviving day to day um that's why it's very important uh, for them to have the support of the government you know absolutely yes and uh, because you know if there are no artists left in the world then there is no voice and or culture left true you know true um because really it is it is the artists who represent the spirit of the community and the voice of the people at large you know absolutely um, absolutely yeah absolutely. yeah so why i'm saying so much about artists is because you know they need the backing of the government and you know and these times it's uh, you know we see like you know these changing times we see that you know the artists are are kind of you know sometimes i hate to use this word <laughs> but i'm still going to use it you know non essential members of society you know <laughs> so but you know we have to realize that uh, that you know it, it, they are what represent the culture of our land and uh, you know the, the the spirit of the community the voice of the community you know and uh, you know without them you know and if we really think of them like that then we have actually lost the meaning or purpose of our lives true and it's a really very valid point and i hope that your voice reaches out and uh, definitely there is something that needs to be done for sure for the artist uh, community and segment yeah Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, and then uh, you know, I I had of course, uh, you know, mentioned to you that um I had met you through, you know, uh, Sarita Vora. Yeah, Sarita that's Vora, right. Who is, you know, loved by all of us. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, you know, um she, you know, she basically uh the director of, you know, Living Room Theater Uh, right. It's a common friend. Uh, it's a dance uh, colleague or dance friend. She, you know, uh, referred me to her, and she reached out to me uh, because she was, you know, doing a staging a new play, and I was also just kind of coming up as an artist. You know, had just come out of the Kathak Kendra, and I was starting to perform. I was starting to, you know, do my, uh, you know, own interpretations of different different poets and things like that. So anyhow I you know I'm uh, you know I instantly liked her when I met her <laughs> you know instantly you know and then we kind of you know it, it, there a journey started and and we started um, you know really going into the 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 ethos of that time you know and uh, uh, you know the, the Mughal time the Mughal era and you know what uh, uh, you know this you know so Bashar and Gila you know for me is a remembrance of that time she is doing amazing work in the theater uh, world you know like she has a living room theater i have been trained as well as her my son has been trained at her and i remember her yes, yes. performance in uh, bachcha ranira it was amazing oh, so that oh, oh, being oh, 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 lovely 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 rising i must say <laughs> Both, both, both. Uh, you know, I, I can't thank you enough for your compliment. But as I was saying, you know, the play was about Mo- the Mughal Emperor Muhammad Shah, you know, also known as Bacha Rangila, you know, right. and uh, and his celebration and patronage of the arts during his reign, you know. Okay. And uh, so for me, Bacha Rangila was a remembrance of that time, you know, and the memory and the pain and the bloodshed that Delhi saw during. you know the invasion 
occupation of his capital by the Iranian, right. you know, leader uh, Nader Shah, you know, and right. you know, and his entire army. So, and through the eyes of a court dancer, you know, you know. So, I'm really extremely grateful to have played this character over and over again, you know, and each time because it was a reminder that when you know artists, you know, like the Living Room Theatre, you know, or other groups like this gather to express a common emotion. Uh, right. You know, it can really, it can really touch the hearts of the audience. You know, absolutely. So, and I think uh, it's uh, an amazing, amazing play. The sets are amazing. The characters are amazing. Yeah. The play yeah, exactly. is being shot, and uh, you know, I think Saita Ji has put all her heart and soul into the play because you can see. She worked really hard. hard. She really worked hard to make this dream possible, and you know, it's not easy because they. You know, for everyone, it's a grassroots organization. You know, they're kind of starting. They're just coming from right. a small group. You know, uh, from a living room. You know, <laughs> that's why she calls it. You know, the living room. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So my heart goes out to all of them. You know, and like I said, all the artists in India who are right now struggling to survive, the theater, the music, right. dance, you know, everyone. So, yeah, I completely agree with you. Yeah. And after, as you know, the program is about Madhvi's luxury dot co. I would like to know the definition of luxury according to you. Ah, <laughs> luxury. Luxury is a state of mind. <laughs> luxury is our inner voice. Um, you know, we can uh, choose to live, uh, you know, in a in a sense of poverty, or we can choose to live in a sense of luxury. You know, so it has nothing to do with our bank balance or you know our deeper pockets are. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's moment to moment, it's moment to moment. You know, what we make of our lives. So. <laughs> And though, you know, I ask all my guests a question about a message on COVID, but I think the message that you were trying to give and, uh, you know, raise a voice for the artists is a message even in COVID to the artists, for the artists, I believe. So I'm not yeah. sure if I should ask this question because you've already answered it. So we'll come to the rapid fire. Um, uh, no, no, I, if you have any other questions, I can take them. But uh, yeah. I would like to, uh, you know, share uh, a poem I've written. Uh, sure. <laughs> which, sure. I, which perhaps might address what you were just about to ask about COVID, you know, and uh, where the world is today. So, uh, sure. but that, that, uh, that after you, you know, after you cover your question, the, if you have okay. any other questions. Yeah. Okay. Towards yeah. the end, the end, maybe? Okay, sure. sure. So, I will go for the rapid fire round with you. So, according to Asta, is it money or fame? <laughs> fame. <laughs> You got me. You got me. <laughs> and what's the best thing about dancing? Oh, it's um, timeless. Time to tears. <laughs> and your inspiration? Sometimes, you know, just sorry, sometimes we dance for, uh, you know, five hours. I dance with my guru on the Pakhavaj, you know, from the Jaipur Karana, and we don't know where the day goes. You know, it's like, and then we come, we take our gurus off, we're sweating, and it's like we've done our, our duty for the day, you know? <laughs> yeah. So your inspiration is uh, all the gurus, uh, the Karanas from Jaipur? Of course, yes. Maharaj. Maharaj, of course. And, uh, you know, I, I have many role models, different role models, uh, you know, uh, you know, in, dif in the industry, in different industries, you know, I, I'm also an avid, I, I used to read a lot. And, okay. uh, you know, so I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm basically inspired by all kinds of people in different, different, different fields, you know, whether it's art, whether it's, you know, writers, even some, you know, some of the prominent actors who have done, you know, just spellbinding work on the screen, you know, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, wonderful. And if not a dancer, then what? Uh, actor? <laughs> actress? Actress? Actress, yeah, but more of an actress or a dancer? We see um, you as a more of a dancer. Stage, because stage live is a different, uh, you know, different energy, different uh, adrenaline, you know. And then, you know, of course, and then anything artistic, anything artistic, basically, you know, where we are 
where we are with the inter, you know, intertwining stories of the past with the present, you know, like, you know, it's, you know, so things like that, collaborations which get me going, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, your hobbies? Um, I also uh, love to, uh, I'm very active, I love to run. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, like I mentioned, reading, traveling, of course, that has always been a part of my work, you know, anyway. But even when I was young, I used to, you know, travel with my friends. That's all I can remember as going from country to country, even throughout Europe after college. And, you know, so, you know, you can understand, you can imagine cultures, you know, I love cultures. I love food, <laughs> you know, this goes on and on. Um, you know, I, I love exposing uh, and finding the links between cultures, you know, and uh, and how we all, at the end of the day, we are all kind of, you know, merge like this, you know. We now think that we are so separate and there's all these lines, there's political boundaries, there's, you know, even religious uh, boundaries, but you know, when you look back, you realize it's all like this, you know, so what are we it's like the one, one world. world. It's like one world. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense, you know, so, yes. <laughs> uh, define yeah. love. Love is self-love. Starts with yourself, and then it's an expression to each and everything around you, including objects including, you know, people, family, relatives, everything. Lovely, beautiful. And your favorite one-liner? Oh, my favorite one-liner. Um, I have a few, in fact. <laughs> I, in fact, keep posting on social media these days, you know, uh, different, different one-liners. <laughs> as many as you remember. <laughs> as many you remember. <laughs> I'll send you some. <laughs> Nothing right now is coming at the top of my uh, head, you know, because, uh, yeah, yeah. Strategy in crisis. Ah, um, fight or flight. I think in crisis, you are the best. The best of you comes out, you know. Challenges right. show you what you are made of, you know, what you're truly made of. Yeah, yeah. True. And describe your yeah, yeah. strategy. So my strategy would just be to, you know, not uh, react, but to, you know, to, you know, with the current, uh, you know, whatever the, the, the circumstances, to really get the best out of it. Because, you know, I, you know, not to, not to make it complicated, you know, get the best out of it. Stay yeah, not to make it complicated, you know, not to uh, get it more, you know, like it's, it's something is, is, you know, already, uh, complicated you don't want to you know wind it more you know you want to just kind of you know like get get you know free yourself from it get out of it you know so yeah really nice and uh, what about you like you know if you could describe your 2020 in one word Ooh. 2020 you know the turning point the you know we're past meets present leading into possibly uh, a future that is, uh, you know, a future that is, um, you can say, a new, a new tomorrow. New normal. A new, the a new, new normal again, a new normal again, I don't like to say because these are all, you know, kind of terminologies of the COVID world. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's fine. It's, uh, it's just, it's a new tomorrow. You know, it's a new tomorrow, and we have to be very hopeful about it. You know, we can't look at it that oh, oh God, this is just gonna be how life is now. That's not it. You know, it's like okay, this is the opportunity. You know, probably the biggest in our in that we'll ever see in our lives. Very nice. I like this. Uh, the new tomorrow. That's a good, uh, uh, you know, yes, way to put yes, it. Yes, and yes. what is one thing that no one knows about you? Okay, I think I've told a few people, um, you know, you, you asked me where I am in my life right now. Um, so on one of my tours, you know, uh, I was basically, uh, I met a man in uh, Lebanon 
and uh, I, I didn't pay much attention to him or you know because of my tours and you know I was traveling so you know, or you can say I didn't give much time or, or thought to it you know and uh, anyway now we are creating a future together and uh, you know trying to and uh, you know so yeah I mean uh, <laughs> so whether yes 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 thank you thank so, you so, for that and uh, yeah i think sometimes you're too busy in your life or you're so caught up that you don't pay attention at that time but i think uh, but something artists, that happen, will happen eventually absolutely but you know especially artists like they are sometimes in such a different mind frame because you know like many people call it like in the west we used to say i remember like wearing different hats you know like you have to you know remove one and put on the other you know so sometimes you don't get it that okay i should now you know remove this hat and move on to a, a different you know part of my life so yeah i'm getting it I, i'm definitely getting it now and uh, you know so like i said whether we yeah. uh settle in his country or uh, we go back to the us you know it'll be for a few months hotel so no. yeah I wish you both all the best and uh, sometimes you know it's important to change the hat and enjoy the moment and live with it absolutely. so I'm happy absolutely absolutely thank you thank you and thank you and if you could describe yourself in one word passionate uh, go getter uh, some people would call me ambitious um mm, i think that's yeah And of course, nice. a dancer at heart, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. beautiful. Okay. And a self-discovery wow. during the lockdown. Oh, um, my reading. I I rediscovered my uh, the the you can say my the reader in me. You know, the lover of books. And uh, I went back to a lot of the authors that I used to read growing up, which were a lot of the contemporary spiritual authors of the time. and along with some of the yogi mystics also you know which inspired me when i was like younger in my 20s uh so you know just kind of recapping that whole journey you know and uh, and rediscovering my own self so one yeah. one awesome and health shot that you swear by i'm sorry i didn't get that a health shot that you swear by a health shot okay Um if I'm getting you correct you mean like a health like a health tip yeah 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 okay um exercise i mean i it's a huge part of my life huge part of my life so i think i'm i i i may mention to you that you know i had moved back to the us last year and uh, i had opened my academy uh you know i was driving you know i had students in different suburbs of, of la and i was you know driving out on the freeways maybe to meet them you know every week and then you know but i was uh, you know regardless of whatever i was keeping a very strict uh, fitness regimen and wow. uh, you know yes yes and uh, you know this is something yeah something this is something that sometimes dancers also forget because the riyadh is also so you know uh, demanding you know uh, but along with that you know whether it's yoga uh, you know which is also you know something which is really prepares you for the dance you know mm-hmm. so uh, i was actively doing you know for some time you know when i was younger but you know whatever it is you know i'm a, i'm a big actually you know <laughs> believe it or not i'm a big fitness uh, you know uh, great fitness yeah lover fitness lover fitness freak a little bit but i love to, i love to go to the gym <laughs> wonderful so nice quite yeah. so, so, nice Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, ask the an advice to youngsters who want to take up Kathak or acting as a profession. Hmm. First, my you know, first and foremost, I would say that uh, be very sure of yourself. Uh, I'm sure you know. I wouldn't be the only one telling you. Everyone would tell you it's not easy. I mean, it's not you know a cakewalk. but uh, given that you have the correct uh, you know drive for it and you're willing to go to the challenges uh it it's definitely worth your while um you know having said that if you have something else uh you know as a hobby on the side or another passion 
you know, if you, you know, something where you apply your mind, even if it's, you know, logical, whatever it is, hang on to that. Continue to practice that or do that. Because sometimes an artist gets so carried away in his space that he loses, you know, sight or track of the whole, you know, the, the big picture. So, yeah, I mean, I would definitely encourage or, or, or urge others to go for it. Uh, right. You know, so, yeah, I went for it. <laughs> so, wonderful. Yeah. And uh, would you like to do an impromptu, like a demonstration? Um, perhaps, I, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, sometimes I get a little shy when I'm speaking and, uh, <laughs> that's okay, no worries. Um, but, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to maybe just share a, a few things that I had, you know, thought about for as far as my journey as a dancer that you were kind of asking me about also. Um, sure. You know, like I told you, I was interpreting uh, uh, poetry, the Sufi mystics, mm -hmm. you know. And right. uh, a lot of people ask me, like, how that happens or, you know, it's, I, you know, it's actually the term interpreting is also incorrect, uh, you know, because... I'm not necessarily putting myself in the poet's shoe, you know, So, but rather in my own mind's eye. Because like, you know, like in, in, in this very famous poetry, famous poetry of Fez Saab, uh, Fez and Fez, he says, Buzz me khayal me, tere khusne ki shama jal gai, you know. And now literally that means in the gathering of my own mind, you know. Which almost sounds like he's schizophrenic, <laughs> but he's actually addressing the mind of his heart, you know, the mind of the heart. Uh, many times, you know, mind of the heart, many times it's the wounded heart, uh, or the way we say, Rakse Bismil, or dance of the wounded. So, you know, dancers, musicians, artists all express the current you know, concerns and the situation of the community through the medium, you know, which is their art. Right. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, I mean, there's a lot of poetry which have inspired me over the years and, you know, I have done, mm -hmm. um, you know, various work with people like Muzaffar Sahab, Muzaffar Ali, oh, Sahab, Jahane Khusro, and then, you know, I have done works on my own where I've, uh, you know, works of uh, poetry of Baba Bulle Shah, uh, Hazrat Amir Khusro and uh, you know I did a I, had, I did a production once on five Sufi poets, uh, you know so the, you know things like that. So anyway, all, a lot of these videos are there on my YouTube channel. Um, so if I can ask you to like or subscribe, you know, to my channel, then sure. I you know so continue to share my works of art with you because I'm constantly now actually trying to go back and upload a lot of the shows and videos which I, you know, didn't do so before. So, sure, yes. Sure, definitely see them all. Yeah, definitely. yeah. I think the audience so. can also go and watch it on your YouTube. I'm sure they can also go and watch it. Exactly. If you search for my name or, you know, I think these days there's a lot of Astas out there suddenly. But anyway, you'll find me, you'll definitely find me if you put Sufi, you'll put Asta, Sufi, whatever, you'll find me, you know. So, yeah, do subscribe because I'm looking for, you know, definitely to increase my channel support and all of that. So, yeah. It's been a real pleasure and honor hosting you on Madhvi's Luxury dot co and such an honest insight into the industry as well as the message that you want to convey from the artist is amazing. I hope it reaches out and uh, real pleasure and honor Asta hosting you here on the show. Thanks, Madhvi. Pleasure is all mine. <laughs> and like we said, uh, you know, I'm going to leave it at a poem. Yeah, um, that would be wonderful you know, addressing the current situation. So, um, let, let in a new world. Bereft of any judgment or criticism. Of race, creed, gender, or minority. Let's not rush this. So, you know, just one note on all that's going on in the media right now, because I spoke a little bit about what I went through, you know, many odd years ago with the press reporters who tried to take wrong angles of me sitting on the staircase and this, that, and, and you know. So this can happen. These things are there in the industry, this, you know. But we should not judge or criticize others for what they are doing in general, you know. Uh, we should all know our own limits. And, you know, I, and I think really only when we cross 
you know, the limits or when we go too far in something, then the problems arise, you know. So, you know, even the whole situation right now in the media with the, with the drugs and everything, you know, you know, it's, uh, we should all, we all should know that the softer drugs are legal in some countries, you know, especially when they're used recreationally, you know, uh, occasion, once in a while, you know. So we should let the media really actually do what they're doing and, and leave the rest of law and order, you know. And, um, you know, because anyway, there are many more important things to be doing rather than to be... Yes, but what the media is saying, you know, each and every day of our lives, you know, to be following it. So I think, yeah. yeah. Very good message, I must say. And we should not be judgmental about anybody, you know. If you've yeah. not seen yeah. There, you've not yes. seen it, you have nobody to yes. comment or anything like that. Correct. And I think that I think the country has been through a very uh, rough time, uh, especially with the women coming out to have a voice. And I think this is just a turning one of the you know one of the, the turning factors uh, right now, which the media is going through with you know just kind of trying to target you know different women you know. Uh, you know, for their acts, whatever it is, whether lo looking at them as, you know, whatever, a haram core, or whether looking at them as drug addicts, whatever it is, you know, these are all just the media's way of bringing up these issues, you know, so that's why I say, let the media do what they're doing, you know, we should focus on our work, you know, and, and focus on building a better tomorrow, you know, Very nice. in, creating, a new, creating a new future. The better new so, tomorrow. According to you. Yes. Yes. Creating yes. a new future where caste, creed, gender, race, minority all have an equal voice. And parents of younger ones no longer fear the world they live in. All good things take time. Take one breath at a time. Don't rush this. Let the political rivalries reach their peak. Let us continue to speak our minds. Let us not belittle the strife. Take one breath at a time. Don't rush this. Let us mourn together the wounds of the past and welcome in a new world where the Donald Trumps of the world don't triumph. Take one breath at a time. Let's not rush this. Where animals, plants, and humans are all treated with respect. And human beings don't have to destroy each other for attention or power. Let our true spirits rise. Take one breath at a time. Let's not rush this. Even if 20 turns to 21 and the months go by, can we make it at our homes? Continue to respect our lives and to protect ourselves from harm's way. Take one breath at a time. Let's not rush this. It's a load to expect what may come as the worst. Bodies laid out across the line one by one. Have we not survived this before? Take one breath at a time. Let's not rush this. Beautiful, beautiful. I, want to, I want to thank you for taking the time for having me on the show, Madhvi. It's really my Amazing. pleasure. Amazing, profound, uh, lovely poetry. It's so meaningful. Really nice. I know we're all busy with our daily schedules and we are seeing all sorts of things in today's world that, you know, that can be disturbing. So, quite disturbing. So, but it is my sincere, you know, request uh, to everyone who's watching to look at things in a positive perspective and, uh, you know, because it's our thoughts as an individual and as a collective consciousness True. that really will determine the future of tomorrow that we talk about. Yes. We all together can conspire the universe for a better tomorrow and a peaceful tomorrow with the positive thinking. Yes. Very true. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 For all those who have missed
access to talk shows can watch it on youtube and uh, for any queries related to real estate art hospitality destination wedding is it like fashion designers jewelry designers wellness mental wellness beauty health you all can get in touch with madhi luxury dot co will be more than happy to serve you and we always feel happy when the clients uh, queries are met and they are happy um with whatever that they have and they are able to get uh, you know sorted with their queries and uh, the show is powered and supported by padmashri artist krishna kanai ji artist aarti zaveri i happen to be a luxury consultant and brand ambassador with sari sanskriti by salma sultan as well as nora usa international fashion designer aisha khanna and the show is also powered by cage wells and more we also have the pika on board with us uh, around the festival festivity season and diwali so anybody who is looking for beautiful gifts corporate gifts as well as gift packaging fuzo packaging can get in touch with mavis.co we'll be more than happy to serve you thank you have a great evening bye bye